Maine is facing a child care crisis. Yeah, we've been talking about this for a while now. Providers are struggling to hire. Fewer workers means fewer open hours and fewer slots for parents to enroll their kids. And lawmakers on both sides of the aisle acknowledge the issue, citing reports that one, 70 percent of kids in Maine under age six live in families where all available parents are working. Two, over the last decade, the number of licensed child care providers has declined dramatically. And three, the average yearly cost of sending your kid to child care is more than a public college tuition. So state lawmakers are putting forward a battery of efforts to try to strengthen Maine's child care availability for families. But child care providers worry it may be too late. From the laughs and smiles on the playground, you'd never know that staff here are stretched thin. Hey, Lane, what are you looking for? At Heidi's House Child Care and Preschool in Scarborough, staff have had to decrease the facility's hours because they are struggling to hire qualified workers. We're at the point where there just are not the qualified people to do this job, and they're just not out there. Will Newburn and Sarah Perigo are co-directors at Heidi's House. We interviewed them in January when they said of 12 interview offers, not one ever showed up. And that's what we're dealing with. That's, that's how bad it's gotten, um, that we can't even, we have literally not had an interview since, I, I don't know when, but we've, we, that's all we do is try. And they offer competitive pay, $20 an hour for staff, $28 an hour for admins, not to mention paid time off, health, vision, and dental insurance, even a 401k, which is rare for these businesses to offer. Despite the benefits, they've only been able to hire one teacher since January. That lack of staff means they have to cut back on the hours they're open and shut down rooms, meaning less coverage for working parents. We can't open all of our classrooms to full capacity because we can't hire. That has a domino effect on teachers and kids. It's harder to be able to actually give them time off when we're stretched thin. We try not to have the children impacted, but can they be? Will they be? Yes, of course. Compounding this concern is an upcoming change to some pandemic relief money that currently gives child care workers in Maine an extra $200 per month just for working in the field. In July, Maine's Department of Health and Human Services is set to change those stipends to a three-tier system. If, if money is lessened or taken away, typically you lose employees. An extra 200 bucks, you know, makes makes a difference. Maybe we do the yellow digger. Teachers like Brooke Santamore. Yeah, it was definitely helpful. We reached out to DHHS to see what changes to expect and have not received a response. It's information these providers are anxiously awaiting. We're hoping that that $200 is the floor and it goes up from there. Governor Janet Mills announced Wednesday a $24 million federal grant to expand access. It will expand outreach and programming, create pilot projects to make pre-K more accessible, increase career growth training for educators, and add financial support for providers to improve their offerings. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. Senate Republicans want to improve access in rural areas where major gaps exist by increasing subsidies and decreasing regulations on how many kids someone like a babysitter can watch at one time without having to get a state child care license. <laughs> Senate Democrats want to raise wages for child care workers and improve affordability for families. The real issue is wages. And for too long, child care workers have been treated or comp said haven't been treated like the professionals that they are. You love the digger, huh? Providers say Lawmakers need to fast track these proposals to allow families to get back to work. We're the workforce supporting the workforce. Without the funding, it's going to cost parents more. So staff at Heidi's tell me that they have more than 150 families on their infant and toddler wait lists. And they tell me that if they can't hire anybody, they're going to have to cut down their class sizes even more. Wow, and that bit about 12 interviews nobody shows up. I mean, that really puts things into perspective of what they're dealing with right now. And if you think about that, that interview was in January. They had had that problem since Thanksgiving. Yeah. And now in April, they said in all that time, so what, almost five months, mm -hmm. they've only been able to hire one person. Wow. People are just not showing up to the interviews. Let's see what happens next. Yeah.